This episode is brought to you by Munton's Malts, a company that is passionate about providing premium malts to brewers worldwide. For over a century, Munton's has been a leading supplier of brewing and distilling malts, offering the finest British malted barley on the market. You can experience the difference Munton's offers by joining a recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club because every kit that ships out now includes premium Munton's malt. You know, we've known the Munton's crew for a long time, and I can tell you, friend, you're going to love brewing with their grains. Ask your local supply shop to carry Munton's malts, or homebrewers can pick up some right now online at txbrewing.com. Join our Trub Club at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club, be a part of the community, and come brew with us. Thank you, Munton's, for supporting our efforts and homebrewers worldwide. Today's show is brought to you by HopsDirect.com. Grown in the esteemed Yakima Valley on the Pewterball family farm, HopsDirect.com offers the widest variety of hops available online at incredibly competitive pricing. It's simple. They grow hops, they sell hops, and they ship hops straight from their family-owned farm to your doorstep. Producing the highest quality hops is HopsDirect.com's passion, and they're proud to be an independent grower in the craft beer industry. Go to HopsDirect.com right now and get what you need to make your brew day better. That's HopsDirect.com. Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam-packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Leftover moisture in my transfer tubing, pressure testing plastic fermenters, is decoction mashing worth it, and beer gas versus CO2. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 324. I figure out which button I chose. Hey, oh, hi there. Welcome back to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com. Click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Now you can call, leave a voicemail, be Todd's best friend, get $25 gift card to catconnection.com when you call 325 325- 305-6107. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Stubing, joined as always by my friend and co-host, the director of operations at cmbecker.com down there, Mr. James Charlson, and the president, chief keg washer, gaping, gashing hole in his neck, Mr. Todd Burns. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jeez. We, let, me, let me start uh, turning, fading this out. We would- up, my, uh, <laughs> see, I'll, I've got... A lot of that stuff came off. I've saved some for you, though, Josh. Oh, you, James, we went to lunch. I'll give it to you after the podcast. It is so <laughs> funny how we will be around. Like, his wife, your wife, Todd, does not like it. Like, she is, like, grossed out by the by the neck. Uh, we can't hardly see it. Thank God. YouTube, they're, they're going to they're gonna take this video off the internet if you show that whole. It, I can't believe they told you to not cover it up. That's- I, I, so, I watched a movie the other day, and a guy had a you know, one of those upper tracheotomy where it's, he's actually got a permanent hole with a little thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, he was smoking through it. <laughs> Isn't that a scene in Beetlejuice? Doesn't someone have that? Or they're smoking? <laughs> yeah, oh, the yeah. lady oh, that. Uh, this was uh, this is like a foreign administrative film. lady. Yeah, the administrative yeah. lady. And then, yeah. I was. He hoping- was actually smoking from that, though, holding the cigarette to it. And, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I love me a good Beetlejuice reference, too. Um, 
if y'all can't tell, let me put it on the full screen for me there. Uh, first off, without proper lighting and, and, and my rig, I kind of look fat in, at this angle. I need my, my home studio mates. I, I saw what you had for lunch. <laughs> it shouldn't be a surprise. I, okay, today is Thursday. I've been here since Monday, and I've been eating like I've been here since Monday. And yeah, I'm, yeah. So the reason you look fat is because yeah, got, it's amazing how quick I can bloat. I came in Monday reasonably in shape, and uh, eight pounds later, I'm making up to eight pounds, but not much. Todd has Todd's been amazed at how much food I put away every meal that we have. I just can't. I, I can't believe how much you can eat. And you don't even seem that miserable afterwards. No, it's uh, it's amazing. I, in fact, it's the opposite. I'm very happy. <laughs> I eat and I kind of frolic away. Uh, his wife bought me two big boxes of my favorite sugary cereal, and there's only one. On oh, right. and then she bought that whole th- those two trays of dessert items. So mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. been pr- impressive. And it's hard. Very very impressive. Your wife makes food, and she doesn't ask me if I want seconds. She commands me to get seconds. I, I'm and not, thirds even and at times. Her, and take hey hey hey. It's true. I have a soft spot for the commands of Mexican women. Ask my mom. She's like, hey, go get more. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to argue with yep. them. It's great food. But anyways. All right. We got questions. Yeah, today. I know. I know. We got stuff to do. Y'all got Y'all are doing an install. We got to get there. Uh, real quick. I'll go through the small talk quick. We'll get through the questions quick. Um, we do have a new kit section up live at catconnection.com working on finishing the video and the article for it but the wedding stuff we've talked about on the show we solicited people's photos and all that for it the actual kit section for those wedding and event kits Todd it's up it's live people can actually go and get them and where I think what I like about these kits and James and I have actually talked about this for years where it's it simplifies it to where the good, the majority of people who are overwhelmed, it it de over uh, dewhelms it. Is that a word? But like, it just makes it easier. Like, I know, I see what I'm getting. That's perfect because it is a solution to. I want to serve beer at this party, and I have. I'm going to get two taps. That has two taps. Perfect. And they just order it, and we'll ship it out, and it, it'll be easy on everyone. Where the customization one has worked well for us over the years because not a lot of our competitors offer it, but. James, you'll agree. There's a good chunk of people who just want to be told what they need, and 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 we ship it to them without. Oh, I, I would say be told. They just don't want to have to make decisions, right? You know, they just right. the, the kit. You know, I think that you know we talked about it. Just if you can go in there, and say, "Yep, that's what I need." Click done. Uh, life goes on. So uh, uh, maybe I you'll... think we need to do one more change to it, but we could talk about oh, it. Oh, oh no, is it not good? Is it? No, no, no. It looks great. It's just, I think it's too many things in one category and people aren't going to understand what the purpose is. I think it, we need to explain basic fridge, shank kind of kit and tower kit and what they're used for. Yeah. It, we, and it can evolve. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I do what you're saying. The, my initial thought was people searching for it have all their options in front of them, but you're right. We yeah, need yeah. To, we'd also need to niche it down. Because there will be people who do or, or maybe in the description explain what the differences are. Because people listen to the podcast, you know, or you may not know that, you know, you have your basic kits, just your little party faucet like you probably used when you were in college and went to a keg party and was were able to hold yourself up by your arms <laughs> upside down and drink the beer out of it. And then the shank is either goes through the uh, keyser wall or your fridge wall or our wall. And then the tower, of course, goes on top of something. So I don't know. It's fairly intuitive, but I think it confuses people why there's different kinds it if they don't know be. anything about it. Right. So. Right. I agree with you. We'll figure it out. And and we, we, since doing the show, people have been more comfortable sending us feedback about our site as well. And yeah. while I'm always soliciting feedback for the podcast. We also love it when we give site feedback because we've made changes based on site feedback. People have been, we have. People yeah, yeah. will give a suggestion like, oh, my gosh, why haven't we been doing it that way forever? And uh, so if you have suggestions, it usually for that, starts out. Why are you idiots? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. That's the email you send to me anyway. Uh, so, yeah, we do have that. The wedding kit section. Go to catcondition.com. Check it out. Uh, you can use our promo code HHH. Get 5% off your order. Or if you're in the Trump Club, we have varying tiers. Some people get up to 12% off when they order at Cat Connection. And some people who are at that tier where they get a recipe every month too. make they're they're not ashamed to tell me i don't even listen to the show i just want the recipe and the discount so we're okay with that which brings me let me segue if i can get the screen to work nope that's the wrong screen which one do i want not that one oh, there we go 
Trump Club members. This is literally no, last. I don't see anything. You don't ever see anything. This is literally the last call for the Kolsch to go out for March's recipe for members of our Trump Club at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. If you want to brew the Kolsch, go to that website, join the $50 tier, or if you're going to brew 10 or 15 gallons above that, sign up. I will get it out to you as long as you sign up before April 1st, which is Saturday, I think. So today's Thursday. Yeah, you're listening to this live the day of. This is pretty much as last call as it gets. And this happens to be my favorite recipe. You can see on the side there, and by you, I mean people at youtube.com uh, forward slash homebrew happy hour todd not you but those people can see our wonderful sponsors the grains are provided by muntins we're using their um oh, what is it called whole lager malt is what we're using for this kit and then from hops direct we're using a holler tile sub and then uh imperial of course my favorite strain deter I am, oh, I'm so pumped. I love this recipe kit. I love that we are having Kolsch Cup come up. I didn't put the screen up there because it's full. Sorry. We, we, we even have a wait list of five people already. That And as people are writing in, I'm adding them to the wait list. But we have 40 people signed up. We have 40 people fully paid, Todd, now as of today. So we have our work cut out for us at the last weekend of May Uh getting the shirts in, get a trophy, the grand champion trophy. It's going to be a good time. Uh, but Yeah, I can't wait to do the judging. I, I want to brew a Kolsch. I think I, I'm ready to brew a Kolsch, but I can't brew right now at all. You so I, what's your weightlifting limit? Is it 10 pounds or, or 15? It's like 20 now, oh. I think, 15 or 20. Yeah, you're but right. it would be uh, my equipment's too heavy. You're I actually can't. bouncing back really fast. It's been impressive. Yeah, I, I think you should help me brew. That's what I was getting to. Oh, know, we well, should brew a big batch and then we could split. You know, split it you, up. You, next time I come up, you, you could pay James back for the mini cans <laughs> no, of beer he's giving you. <laughs> James, you yesterday, you or, or whenever it was, you were so polite about like I do have a keg for you, Josh. But hey, this can't just be like puff, puff, puff. You got a puff, puff, give, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I have, we haven't been brewing, my pop. It works brewing. good when all three brew because I we know. Don't brew all the time. Well, what's gonna be again? I hate beating the uh, dead horse or whatever the saying is, going down that rabbit trail. Uh, I want a brow talk because that would make it infinitely easier to get into the would. to the trade. It would. Just gotta take it. I home. mean, there's always that guy in the group, and you're that guy. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. The, that's the story of my memoir or the title of my memoir. You are that guy. <laughs> anyway, also, the last thing I'll say, and because I'm remote, I forgot to load up the screen, but y'all already know. Go to homebrewcon.com. Come visit us. We're going to be giving a presentation <clears throat> in June. It's like the 25th through the 27th. But go to homebrewcon.com. Registration early bird special up until April the 7th. So if you want to get the best pricing possible on the packages and if whether you're just going to do the, the social stuff or you can actually go to all the seminars so you can see us, all that information is available there. I know, Todd, they've been putting out social posts of all the speakers. I'm really, we haven't put ours out yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they say about ours or if they, if they're using the photos I provided or if they're sourcing better photos because I didn't give them that great a photo of us, but yeah, uh, I am looking forward to that. But yeah, go to homebrewcon.com. We're going to be there, which is my segue before I give it away. It's time for listener feedback. Another week of more voicemail listener feedback about some recommendations of what to do in San Diego. And this one is from our buddy, Chris. Hey, Josh, Todd, and James. This is Chris in San Diego. Love the podcast. Talk about Excellent production quality, wink, wink. Josh, good job on that. Wanted to give some listener feedback about San Diego breweries worth a visit. You guys are staying in Mission Valley, which has some great restaurants, but not a lot of walkable breweries. I recommend heading over to North Park. I'd start at North Park Beer Company. They're one of the best San Diego breweries. They make so many great styles, great lagers, IPAs, and some stouts, everything really. I'd start there, and then Pure Project is right by there. You can pop over there. They got a good selection, too. They make a lot of great different styles, a lot that you don't usually see. That's one of my favorites. Uh, after that, you can pretty much walk around. 30th and University is sort of the epicenter. It's about 10 minutes from Mission Valley, but you could go in any direction. And you'll hit up a couple of good breweries. It's a great place to be. Of course, there's downtown by the ballpark. I like Lost Abbey and Resident. They're, they're pretty good. You guys might also like Coronado. They make a great red ale. 
and some other uh, sessionable styles. So does Carl Strauss. You might like them. Anyway, can't wait for Homebrew Con. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, I'll buy the first round. Cheers. He subbed awesome. up to me. He offered to buy a round. Got to play that voicemail. Uh, North Park. Do you remember our, our buddy Heidi of West Coast Witches, James? She, mm-hmm. I remember they, they were, they're in Oregon now, uh, still doing cider stuff, but they, uh, her, her husband ran North Park Soap Company. And so every time I hear North Park, I remember that. We get re- these recommendations. What I love about the people calling in or writing in about what to do in San Diego, Todd, is it reminds me how much of a beer city San Diego is. It's oh, like, yeah, it's huge for beer. I can't, I can't, I can't wait. And it makes sense that they're doing it HomebrewCon there. I won't talk bad about where they had HomebrewCon last year. We got a lot of people writing in hate mail and telling me I'm dead to them and blah, blah, blah. It's a great city. Every city is great in this country. If you, whatever city you're in, I love it. But San Diego is like super easy to get excited about. So I can't wait. I'm confident he, that we're going to be Ubering. And yeah, there she is. Oh, yeah, you got in the calendar that she organized in 20, yeah. Was that 2018 or 2019? Uh, it was pre-COVID. I remember that. 2019. 2019 calendar. So they probably made it in 2018. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah. It's North Park Soap. Uh, it was great soap. They When they moved, I think he got a different job and, and yada, yada, yada. But either way, I have a shirt from him still from North Park Fight Company. I, I don't know if we're going to have time, and I might beat Fat Josh by then, but San Diego is also a mecca for jujitsu. And so I've been thinking, oh, maybe I can get up early and go to a 6 a.m. class. But like... The day after club night, I don't know if I'm going to want to get up at 6 a.m. And, and go wrestle sweaty dudes. My my goal is uh, during the entire thing is, now that I know this, is to make absolutely sure you're in no condition to get up at 6 a.m. <laughs> to go wrestle. Go yeah. jiu-jitsu. Dude, hey, Unless hey. people want vomit on them do when you, they're wrestling with you. James, do you not remember when we went you to... You got up. You remember? Yeah. I got in Nuremberg. Up. I, in Nuremberg, yep. I got up. We stayed up till like 2 in the morning. I got up and went down to the treadmill, and I threw up. I got on the treadmill for like 20 minutes, threw up for about 10, ran for another 20. I felt great. That is my cure for a hangover, Todd, is, is exercise and vitamins. And uh, yeah. and try not to throw up the vitamins. But anyways, Chris, thank you. You could so try not drinking as much. But you just said you're a bad influence. And when you're not around, I don't drink as much. When you're around, it's like Josh, have another. Come on, do this. I don't know. I see a lot of a lot of postings on Facebook of you. Uh, <laughs> Oh, anyway, let's oh, move on. Let's move on. Uh, so thank you, Chris, for leaving that voicemail. Reminder, guys, when you leave a voicemail, the mail, whether it's feedback or a question, which we need questions. So if you want to get a $25 gift card to catconnection.com, leave us a voicemail at 325-305-6107. Like our first question, our buddy Adam from Florida. Hey, Josh. Adam in Florida. I just brewed. My uh, first uh, pressure, under pressure, uh, with the Anvil Chubby, and uh, I transferred to a keg, uh, so on and so forth. But I had a question after this, because I'd never pressure transferred before. How do you safely clean that transfer line, you know, where it's uh, liquid to liquid? And I took it apart, and I put it in the sanitizer, and uh, it's still, like, moist inside there, which I doesn't seem good for the tube to have you know moisture inside. So how do you guys clean that uh, when you're all done uh, to be safe for the next uh, transfer? Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's a good question. We had a, a line cleaning question last week, and I wanted to bring one like this to follow up because we were specifically talking about liquid lines on a kegerator, Todd. But when you're cleaning any lines like these transfer lines, you would treat it like you would your your other lines, right? Yeah, I normally just clean them. And, I mean, I just clean everything, the lines, everything, and brew clean, uh, rinse it. And then if it's a line and I'm worried about moisture being in there, I just leave it open, hang it over something, and let it dry out before I put it away. I was going to say, I, I I know it's a straightforward question. I promise I won't try to drag it out too long. My no, dad, you're going to drag it out. I can already famous tell. Famous last words. My pop and I, when we have transfer lines like that, like let's say both ends are MFL, right? Because that's for our liquid line that we'd use for transferring, it's probably going to be. That way we can screw on uh, a, a liquid MFL on one side, a liquid MFL on the other. We take off the disconnects. 
That means the line's open. We, we let gravity do its job of getting all the actual liquid in there. And then I call it the woo, woo, woo method because we're just swinging that thing outside, like really <laughs> trying to get airflow through it and all that. And then we hang it. And that seems to work. Does, does moisture in the line those not bother you or you do your best to make sure there's nothing left in there, uh, like moisture wise? I mean, I just I hang it and it dries out. Oh, it does. Dry- I put okay. it away. Yeah. So super straightforward. Yeah, and you do, but again, though, you do clean it like like you do with your beer lines. I'm not trying to drag it out. I'm just making sure we, oh, gosh, don't quit turning your head that way. James, let me kick I'm it to you. I'm just resting. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> resting. James, do you have anything to add to it before I get to the next uh, question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no, that's pretty much it. I, I don't know which line. Is he talking about the one that's inside? No. Because I'm, I'm looking at King Chubby. And there's the uh, the dip the floating dip tube that's inside, or is he's talking about if he's using a disconnect on both that, ends? That's what I got from it. That he's using. Just it, take yeah. a just take a screwdriver when you're when you're cleaning that, and, and you can take you can take either one side or both sides off with the screwdriver. Save those parts, soak them in some brew clean, and then uh, dry rinse it real good. Wash it, rinse it, and let it air dry, and it should be fine. I say the air dry method. I mean, there, there, there's no secret. Like I said, but the woo, 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 it, it tries to get us going. I, I do that too, by the way. As yeah. much as yeah, I'd like to great... make fun of you, I do that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. It's the best. I'm glad I had something to add to. I'm going to start going woo, 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 woo when I do it. <laughs> How do you not? That's why I call it the woo. It, it's like the noise it makes. Like woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to clip that with no audio. It hurts my neck just watching you do that right now. <laughs> Oh, oh, let me, uh, Adam, thank you so much for submitting the question. Let me digress before we get to question number two. Todd was on steroids yesterday, finally taking his steroids. I'm still on them. <laughs> by, the, by the end of the day, James, he was like, I feel really good now. You know what, Josh? I'm ready for the rematch. Like, he was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to wrestle him he yesterday. Was, yeah. He, yeah. I'm on steroids. But, I can beat and, anybody. And I only bring it up because you're talking about your neck hurting because you still, I would stand beside you and you still had to turn your whole body to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Frankenstein over here. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, yes, Adam, thank you for submitting that question. Another reminder when you call and leave a voicemail, you get a $25 gift card to catconnection.com and the line is 325-305-6107 if you email us a question or you text that same hotline you still get a $15 gift card which i think is pretty good like our buddy joe did sent me a text and he wrote i received the same firmzilla you guys talk about on the podcast the price was perfect i appreciate the recommendation it has an expiration date on it, and with a question mark. I have to redo that. It has an expiration date on it? Before I call more beer, is this date for real? Do stainless fermenters have expiration dates? How can I make this last as long as possible before replacing it? Um, the expiration date, correct me if I'm wrong, now either one of you, is for the hydro test of pressurization it, to the vessel, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. you don't want it to, uh, exploding, so that's why they have a hydro date. So yeah, my hydro just means what you think it would mean water. So you fill it full of water, you take it up to the. I think if I remember right, that you have to put a different pressure relief. I, I have a couple of them, so I'm familiar with the test. You you have to uh, put a higher pressure relief valve on it. I think the one they offer is like six bar which or seven bar which is about 100 psi if i remember right versus the one that you normally use which is which much lower and then you uh, they tell you exactly what pressure to take it to and, and then if it doesn't uh rupture then you're good for another year <laughs> yeah Wait. in fact if you go to kegland.com.au they actually have a Fir- firmzilla hydro test instruction manual on there so it's pretty in- intuitive. It walks you through each step. Man, y'all grabbed the ball and ran with it because I was going to ask, like, with I didn't even get the questions this week. So well, uh, yeah, you I mean, did. I did, but way too late to actually oh, read them. Yeah, that's true. Y'all were busy too. I sent them late. Um, I was eating. I was busy eating. I forgot to do them. Uh, but uh, with with CO two cylinders like aluminum and stainless, we you there is no at home thing. It, it'd be way too no big. no. But no, but but y'all are saying this one is meant to be at home. You can do. You don't. Yeah, just you can sit. test it at home. Oh, okay, that makes it even because okay. it's only a hundred psi. So you're not water doesn't expand. So it doesn't blow up it, it just would release if that makes sense 
But that gets a little more complicated when you're talking about 1,800 PSI. Oh, which, or, which, or 20, 2,800 PSI, 2,600 PSI. Right. It all depends on what kind of tank you have. But a, a CO2 cylinder is 1,800 PSI is what they, you know, is what they're rated for. So, um, getting to that other part of his question, is this something y'all do on your stainless ones or are those perpetually good? For- they don't need a rating. Yeah. Yeah, they're stainless steel. So, and so they they're have, uh, a pretty rugged clamping. Yeah, to the lid. Ah. And, and the reason they don't need a hydro, even though you would say, "Well, wait a minute," but metal cylinders need a rating. Why do? Why does this not need a rating? And the reason is, is because you're just working with such low PSI. I mean, they're only rated. Those stainless steel fermenters are, are rated for uh, a, a lot of them are rated for a lower pressure. Um, that's one thing. So. It's one thing I've been a little vague on, James, and maybe you could help me with it since we have the question. I know that when we received our spike system, it was rated to like 15 or 20 PSI, but then now that people are doing pressure ferment on them, but you're still not taking them. You're really not ever taking them above 10. Well, I don't ever take it above 10, but let's say people take it to 15 Mm -hmm it's still you're still within that range so there's just it's so strong you never need to hydro it right yeah and then the pressure relief valve that comes on those yeah you know they've got to blow off they've got a safety blow off too so i I think think that's what i'm thinking of 15 right is that 15 i believe so Uh, if you go to spike dot spike brewing.com and pull up their fermenters uh, they'll tell you exactly what that setup as far as their P. They have a really nice PRE valve. We Todd was nice enough to get us one, and uh, I use it. That's all I do now is pressure ferment. Yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, I was looking for the all rounder we have in here that that uh, Joe was writing in about. Are y'all y'all have beer in it or Todd? Did you take it home to use it? But either way, I was only uh, it may still be at my house. Yeah. I was only sorry, looking. James. <laughs> sorry, James. Hey, no worries. I got. I got Despite. two conicals. Yeah. One's not pressure. One is. But the reason I was looking for is because I don't remember what is the expiration date. Just the sticker on it because I don't. It's a little. Uh, it's a little. Almost looks like a laser stamp or okay. Because yeah. yeah. I was gonna say I'm. I, was th- I obviously I'm not home right now. I can't look at mine. I was like, oh crap! I don't remember just looking at the date on mine. Was it a sticker that I peeled off? Because I have a bad habit of not reading instructions and just peeling off stickers off. The, like, oh, brand new toy. Take off that. Take off that. I don't really read it. It's like the tag on a mattress or something. Like I just don't pay attention. But um, the expiration date. Now Todd is the stickler for expiration dates, especially when it's real dangerous, like filling a CO2 cylinder. Like. We uh we had one yet yours from home you brought up and you gave it to Vilver and he was like you want me to fill it and you were trying to tell him like well wait sure it's safe is it safe look at the date and did that whole lecture you do are you like do you know the date on yours Todd or- and I could see it going in this year <laughs> coming out this year are you, well, of me or Vilver or both both of, us? of yeah you. we yeah. were yeah we were making fun of you well, like- the, the, I don't wait a minute the, the one thing that always works with Josh is. He's like, oh, it's just had a date for two months. I mean, what's the big deal? What's the matter? And I go, I don't know, no problem at all. If you want to fill it yourself, go ahead. Yeah, I did. Well, That's what's true. the danger of yeah. that? <laughs> I did. I did. I go, wait. You're like, well, instant death is a worst case scenario. Yeah, so he's fine with Vilver filling it <laughs> if it's out of date, but he won't fill it if it's out of date. Yeah, yeah absolutely. See? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Uh, we, we uh, But with, with these plastic ones, you know, first off, y'all, you you guys feel safe doing your own hydro test. The day, we haven't had them, but for maybe a year. Do y'all, do, what is the dates on our the ones that y'all have? I think they're one. I think they're good for one year. Okay, so so maybe we do a video uh, at some yeah, point when, when it's ready, mainly for you to show me in person how to do it because it, okay. it, it still sounds scary to me pressurizing something. But you're saying with hydro, it won't expand. It would just like display a leak if it wasn't if it like what does critical failure look like during a hydro? Well, test? it's not gonna, it's not gonna shoot. So let me. I don't know how to explain it the right way. It, because the air ex, uh, basically compresses when it when it decompresses because it's open it can shoot stuff out whereas water doesn't uh it doesn't compress it's the same amount of water so if you have 100 psi of air you've actually got more volume of air at uh, uh, that's not being contained 
Whereas with water, you would have the exact same amount of water as if you didn't put pressure on it. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. But is you- that, would that, would that, is that a good way to explain it, James? Or would you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You looked at, you were kind of looking at me like, <laughs> wait a minute. Like he, okay. He, you're looking at him like he looks at me, man. Um, yeah. What? <laughs> Wait, so what does critical failure look like? I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to get like, do I need to bring a shield when we're doing the video? Like, do I need to bring? Uh, wear a bathing suit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So critical failure isn't going to be catastrophic, like fatal. It'll You're just gonna be get messy. Wet. It'll just be yeah. messy. Okay. Yeah. And and I'm that. So that's why that, that makes sense. Why they do that as a hydro test? I honestly I know what the word hydro means. With CO two, I never considered that it's literally a water test. I, and the reason they do hydro with CO two cylinders is the same reason. It, it, the if it does ex- explode, as you might say, it doesn't. It's not near as violent as as it would be with a gas in there. Near, not nearly as violent. That's a great way to describe uh, someone yeah. dying. Anyways, Joe, uh, let me make sure we covered his whole question. How, how can <laughs> I, oh wait, I, I know, I know, I know. But how can I make this last as long as possible? With, with I mean, you, you have to test it every year, right? It's not, I mean, it, like you would make any piece of equipment last. You just take care of it, clean it, sanitize it, and that's it, yep. right? There's, I mean, well, some of the things you got to be careful about on these is my, my understanding after reading the instructions and everything is you don't want to leave sanitizer in it for a long time, and you don't want to leave a lot of cleaners in it for a long time. So if you're sanitizing this thing, you know, sometimes people get a little lazy and they say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sanitize this and they put the sanitizer in it and they leave it. And then the next day they come back and use it. I I think there's a limit of, I don't remember what it is. It's a certain, like an hour or something that you can leave it in because it'll start to break down those plastics. Right. Yeah. We had an issue at CM Becker with our squeeze valves and, uh, they, that we use a clear shank and they were, we had one customer using a lot of them, soaking them in their cleaning solution. It was actually the thing was turning, it was cracking and falling apart. Oh, so no. that's very important. Yeah. Well, and, and I guess an acid based sanitizer would be the culprit, right? Of, of it would just eat away at the plastic where it's not really like in a stainless. Uh, I think even an alkaline one could do it. I if think it, it was, was the alkaline yeah. uh, that was doing it. Oh, interesting. I made an assumption. Yeah. You know what happens when you assume, Todd? I do. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so may, that should be a selling point for, for stainless. I'm surprised they don't say like, hey, you don't get a hydro test every year. Spend the extra money. But I don't know. The, 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 Joe is right. The price point on these plastic PET uh, pressurized f- f- fermenters, it's incredible. It's so cool. How much, the, I got the 15.9 for 15.9 gallon Firmzilla all rounder was what, like a buck 70 maybe or a buck 50 with free shipping from our friends at More Beer. It was perfect. There's a link in the description if y'all want to go check out the Firmzilla that we are talking about on the show or anything we talk about should be in the show notes. And if it's not, leave us a voicemail or email tburns at catchandetchin.com and let them know I'm not doing my job. Thank you, Joe, for submitting the question. Moving on, we've got another voicemail question from our buddy Kyle from Washington. What's up, homebrew happy hour crew? This is Kyle from Washington State. Um, I'm calling today because I have a question regarding decoction mashing. Um, I've tried this a couple different times, and I'm not quite sure if if it's given the effects that um, I was expecting. But I'm wondering if you guys have tried it on many different styles and if you've gotten that noticeable Maillard or melanoidin flavor that uh, can be added to the uh, to the finished beer. Um, if you guys could please touch on that a little bit and uh, let me know what your recommendation is for single or double decoction mash or whether you think it's a total waste of time. Um, I'd really oh, yeah. appreciate it if you could um, mention it on the show. Uh, cheers, Dallas. Thank you. Well, you're well, we, we have a lot. Between the three of us, we have a lot of knowledge on this. It just happens to all be in James's brain. <laughs> so I was gonna say, you took it from me, man. That was what I was going to say. Like, as the resident expert of the caution, I just wanted to let this is more of a James draw. Yeah, no, James did. So we did a video, got a lot of views, very well received on a non traditional decoction that you did on an alt. Yeah, beer. just a simple, uh, just a, I would call a flavor modification. You now, know, just boil it. You know, like 15, 20 minutes. I think it did. I think in that video, I was talking about a 15 minute boil on the yep. grains and then just put them back in the mash. I would do, 
when you if, like, for instance, if we're doing a, a if I'm doing an alt beer, I'll back when I was really just trying to completely duplicate what was being done in Germany, I would do my beta first. And then I would take some of that grist or the grains, uh, just the grains. You try to get as much water out as possible and then put it on the stove and, and stir it until it gets, you're going to get a lot of, uh, caramelization of the, sh- of the, the grains and you'll see water kind of come out and, uh, I just stir it real good. Make sure you don't scorch it because that'll ruin the batch. Just keep stirring it for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, I think it gives a little flavor, a little caramelization of the grains. And um, a lot of people would call the Maillard reaction, but it makes a difference. I I, I think that it's slight, but uh, back in the day, I think they did that for flavor and also bumping the temperature up to the next mash temperature schedule a lot of german breweries now that's they still do it to this day well and i was going to ask i I know you don't typically it's been a while since you've mentioned it so i'm not going to say you don't Mm -hmm. you don't do decoction anymore but it's been a while since you've mentioned it was it because of like uh um i'm not going to accuse you of what i have laziness but is it, it were you just not doing it because like you just didn't see enough of a because it is work i mean it's not it's not just yeah 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 and a lot of brewers will say it's just with the today's modified highly modified malt it's just a waste of time and energy to do that right so i think it can create some complex flavors especially if you're brewing a bach or an Oktoberfest or something like that with something a little more body than a pilsner i even did a a decoction on a pilsner was that and uh Okay, it tasted sorry. good. I liked it. I don't remember the Pilsner. But, you know, the Pilsner, I like them dry. So I'm just going to mash in the beta and, and and just get something real light and easy easy to drink. You didn't need the malt complexity uh, for that style. Right. But you're saying, like, um, obviously with the alt beer, if you were giving recommendations for it, you're saying, like, any, like, the base answer could be anything you're trying to add some malt complexity to. So you wouldn't mm-hmm. do it on a Kolsch because it's not going to be super malt forward anyways as the style. But right. an amber lager might be perfect for a decoction. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Anything where you've got a little, you've got a little dark, little darker, you know, you wouldn't want to do it on a light. But there's like, there's some German Pilsners that they use decoction. Um, it's just, it's just, People have, there's pros and cons to it. Um, like I said, some people think it's just a complete waste of time. But then there's some people that swear by it. I, I can taste the difference. You have described the internet where it's like, some people say you got to do it. <laughs> it's like secondary is my favorite topic to troll on people because they're, they're legit people on homebrewtalk.com and the subreddit for homebrewing who like, no, if you, your beer will be cardboard if you secondary. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> not nah, because my boss does it and it's the clearest beer in the world. <laughs> but uh, it, it, to talk about Amber Lager, yours on tap here. Oh my gosh, dude. You, you, did you decoction on that one? You didn't, right? Because you haven't done a while. No, no. Uh-uh. Oh, well, That's that, a new recipe I was playing around with. Is it? Oh, it turned out uh-huh. good, man. It turned out real good. I like and it. that one's dry hop too. No way. I did Oh, yep. I think you did tell me that. Uh yep. it, it is not super punch. I mean, it's not it's very crispy. I mean, it's uh mm-hmm. It, it's like a better yingling. And I'm saying that as someone who likes yingling. Like I actually like yeah. that. I know I, I know you don't like yingling, right? So it's not I'm not Oh assuming. boy, people are gonna crucify me at HomebrewCon for that. For not liking it? Yeah. <laughs> oh no oh yeah, yeah. It is what it I, you know what? We'll come we'll bring us we're driving. I'll, let's bring a six pack of Lone Star. When people talk about <laughs> beer, we'll just crack one open like us Texas boys and we'll drink the Lone Star in front Oh of them. shoot. But anyways, no the deta- uh, this is one of those ones I will solicit feedback from people uh on decoction. Is it something you even heard of? I just like saying decoction. It sounds kind of dirty. Uh have you <laughs> if you have any feedback on that, let us know by leaving us a voicemail and get yourself a twenty five our gift card to 325-305-6107 or if you have any questions or insight or whatever same hotline I, again feedback i say i'm soliciting feedback leave us comments in the youtube video that would help us out the most um 
feedback, it might be a while before I play it because we are backlog. We have a ton of feedback uh, voicemails, but question voicemails. If you want to get yourself a gift card, now's the time because I'm running low on question voicemails. I could use those. But anyways, Kyle, thank you so much. Let us know what style. I mean, he was, you know, we kind of said that like the alt beer, anything you want malt complexity on. But if you all have feedback for Kyle, again, leave it in the comments below. And Kyle, let us know what styles you're trying it on and the difference. It's, it's always beneficial brew a style if you're doing it on like a, a straightforward pilsner brew it without doing it brew it the exact same way with a, a single or a double decoction and just do it you know it, it is basically to taste right james i mean you're it's a yeah, trial and I, error i think so i mean if if i was gonna do a, like a really old school traditional one i would probably work my way up and and do like a triple decoction but it takes it takes a lot longer <laughs> time and a lot of people brewing Home brewing is all about can uh, how good a beer can I brew and how little a time Efficiency. can it be done in Absolutely. efficiency. So, Kyle, though, thank you so much for submitting that. Our fourth and final question is from our buddy Alex. He used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com, and he wrote, Fellas, thank you for the weekly entertainment and spurts of knowledge. It makes my commute better. Long-time listener here, first-time question, and it's about beer gas and CO2. My local shop just closed. My local supply shop just closed. They were my supplier for ingredients and swapping CO2. They always called it beer gas. However, when I called a gas supply company nearby, asked if they had beer gas, they said no, but they do CO2 fills. Now I'm all kinds of confused because I have an aluminum tank with a northern brewer uh, with a gas regulator, but the old shop is closed, so I can't ask if they were using beer gas in my tank or calling CO2 beer gas, or if it even matters, I'm really needing clarification, if possible, about what beer gas is and if I will be fine using CO2 from a gas and welding supply company instead of a food and beverage supplier. Keep up the great work and don't work too hard, Alex. Never work too hard. Um, Todd, beer gas is not to be conflated with CO2. Explain. Yeah. Uh, so beer gas is a mixture of nitrogen and CO2. So if you ask for beer gas, they're either going to give you probably a, a 75 CO2, 25 nitro, or a 70 CO2, 30 nitro, or possibly the opposite. It depends. In other words, it depends on what you're using it for. If you're using it in a long draw system, it's going to have more CO2. If you're using it because you're trying to uh, you're, you're trying to push out uh, a stout or something like that under nitro, then it's going to have a lot more nitro than CO2. It you know it depends on the use. But yeah, if you just want a CO2 filter sealed with CO2, don't ask for beer gas. Ask for food grade CO2. Now. You know, I you're you're my supplier, except when you tell me if you want to fill that expired tank, do it yourself. Then I go to the place I won't name them in town of my town, and they don't ever check the date. And they use my cylinder and they fill it. I've never asked them if it's food grade. Do, is that is that the default you think at a welding supply shop, or am I poisoning myself? If you go to a welding supply shop and they fill your out of date CO two <laughs> cylinder, I wouldn't trust anything else they do. <laughs> Okay, I might be hyperbolizing. I don't know if the, if they filled it out of date. I mean, um, that would be highly illegal for a, a a welding company to do. They never do. I was just I was just joking. It was a joke, Todd. The internet's a joke. Nothing's real. But let, let but if you go to a welding supply shop, is the default to have food grade gas, or do you have to? Specifically not, no, have? not necessarily. It's more expensive. Okay, you have to ask. Okay, and well, sometimes you just can't get it. In, in yeah. your area. I know for the longest time, I've had a keg in my garage since 98, and the welding shop was the only place I could get it. And it wasn't food grade where you were getting it, I'm saying. So, no, I, w I would say if we're getting it from a, from a welding supplier, I'm then it wouldn't be. Okay. pretty, pretty but confident. There's a, there are a lot of welding supply shops that also do a lot of CO2 business locally, and they'll they'll have food grade CO2. I, I think I don't think – I think it would be unusual for them to have both. I think they probably either get food grade or they don't get food grade. And, and a lot of it's going to depend on their type of business. Because, like, in you're asking about a, – a, in, in San Marcos, there's more than one gas company. But one of them. of them in particular is very much 
you know, it's, they sell a lot. It's a welding uh, gas company, but they sell locally a lot to restaurants. So they are going to have uh, food grade CO2, but I don't know if that's the one you're going to. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't, I don't go to the one in San Marcos. I go to the one in Texas. Yeah. So I, okay. <laughs> but we, uh, when, and actually I say that I go to you, you fill them. And I, last time you just made me swap. You, you found one that you weren't using in your s- supply because you've got five gazillion yeah. of your own. All of mine are about to expire. We're going to have to have them all redone. Yeah, in about that's two what, that, and so. that's what you told me. You have one of my expired ones, and I took one of your other ones, and you said that we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get them all done at one point. And that's yeah. the, in the hydro test, which you have to do in like the DFW area. That's not that's not something that's local or or convenient rather. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go there. I found a place finally. I've, I've relocated a place. It's in Santa, outside of San Antonio, and I'm hey, going to go there. Nice. So, Near yeah. me. Um, wrapping up or, or wrapping up, going through his question. So, is beer gas is same cylinder? Because, like, it, it, like, if you had to guess, his, his homebrew supply shop was filling his CO2 cylinder with the, is that a CGA320 or CG320? What is the valve? What is that connection? CGA320 is yeah. for CO2, right. but people use that for beer gas and they also use the 580 for beer gas. Okay. So with the, if you, ha- so no harm if you put in your CGA320 valved tank beer gas that the nitrogen the- yeah and the reason is is that it's totally different than the way you would normally do nitrogen so nitrogen is usually a compressed gas but when you compress co2 it turns into a liquid and the pressure is much lower when you when because nitrogen doesn't turn into a liquid at that temperature it's in a much 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 lower temperature than to get enough volume in there, they they fill it to a much much higher pressure. So the reason you can put beer gas in either one is because the lowest common denominator is is the CO two cylinder, but it's and the CO two gas. So they're they're only going to do it with pressure, not with with the liquid. Have you guys, either one of you, actually used beer gas on your systems, or has it just been food grade CO two? I haven't uh, used beer gas. I've never uh, I've never done a nitrogenated beer, so I haven't. Okay. Oh, well, I just wonder if if I would notice a net benefit of using beer gas when I'm mainly just doing uh, non porters and stouts. Like, uh, like, is my Kolsch going to have a better mouthfeel under beer gas than it than it it's, is? It's going to be nitrogenated. I mean, if right. you like that taste, I I wouldn't want my Kolsch to have nitrogen in it, but somebody yeah. might. Ooh, a nitro Kolsch. That's all. My- <laughs> People are probably screaming at me like, you made fun of all these like sour Kolsch and you're talking about nitro Kolsch. That's not in style. Uh, but it's just how you dispense it, guys, not how you make it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, to be fair, I- I've been to a lot of breweries where they had it both ways. So they're like, you know, this this month we're doing this beer on nitro and just and on straight co2 so you can taste the difference i imagine beer gas is probably more expensive too to fill your tank with right just based assume. on the top so I, i'm thinking the likelihood it's possible his shop did have beer gas or they could have just been calling it that for, for you know what i mean like some people conflate things when like i conflate secondary and long well, I mean, some, I, I need gas for my beer is different than I need beer gas. Is the way I would explain it. Okay, perfect. But so at at the end of the day, I guess where I'm getting out with this question is like he he said, does it even matter what he's putting in his cylinder if he's used to yes, beer gas? Yes. It, but he's not doing nitrogenated beers. He he'll be fine. I mean, he going back to just or getting to CO two food grade CO two. He's going to be fine and probably save some money. Uh, I'm assuming that he wasn't really getting beer gas from, from the way he asked the question and everything. I'm assuming he was just getting CO2. Okay. Gotcha. But that's an assumption because I don't have enough information. You so. know what happens when you assume boss, you, you yeah. know what that does. But I am assuming. Yeah. Alex, please write in and, and give I us clarification. <laughs> I'm assuming. Right, right in, let us know. And again, I keep saying, don't give feedback, but this is a great one too. For there are people out there probably like, I use beer gas for everything, Josh, and that's what you should be dispensing your coal, Sean. I don't care what Todd says. And there'll be some people who go, I'm, I'm assuming there's nobody out there like that. 
Nobody. The dozens of listeners, you don't think there's one? I will make up a voicemail and do that. <laughs> Josh was right. I, uh, I love to have the... Uh, anyways, Alex, thank you so much for submitting the question. I got us out of here pretty quick, guys, if you ask me. Under an hour. It's like 50-ish minutes. So I know y'all got to get back to that restaurant and figure out that whole uh, install thing y'all are doing for them. So thank you so much for your time, my friends. I appreciate it. And Todd, I'll, I'll see you at the ranch later. Yeah, wait. <laughs> And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page or call B. Todd's best friend when you leave us a voicemail question at 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsors like Munton's Mall. Premium grains for a better brew day. If you aren't already brewing with Munton's Malts, give them a try by visiting txbrewing.com or join our Chub Club at a recipe receiving level. For the best hops available online, give our friends at hopsdirect.com a visit and pick up what you need for your next brew day. Also, get a pack of Imperial Yeast along with premium recipes from us when you join the Chub Club. Go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and come brew with us. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thanks for listening.